Eric Berry's back, and this defense could use him. We're going to talk about him as well as the game plan for the Raiders coming up here in just a minute, but for right now, here's something brand new. Welcome back to RGR Football. I'm Ryan and this is me going rogue about the NFL and the Chiefs and a little bit of the AFC West. I uh, hope you guys like the new intro. I've been working a lot on that, trying to learn some new skills uh, and really wanted to get a feel for what this channel is about. Uh, credit to uh, the drone pilots that helped me out with some of that as well as the photographer. I'll have uh, his contact information in the link below if you have any need for a professional photographer. Um, we have plenty and plenty to talk about, but the big news that kind of preempted what I was going to do with this video is that Eric Berry showed back up, and not just as a coach or a, a teammate in the film room. Eric Berry's back on the field, first time since August 11th. Uh, it has been nearly four months since we've seen Eric Berry do his thing, uh, and got some early, uh, very, very light practice in, uh, indoors, and then actually moved outdoors as the week went on. And at, at this taping, we've not heard anything about uh, any any holding back, where they're trying to feel it out and see where he's at, but from what little we've seen, and I'll show you some clips here, uh, it looks like he's moving all right, looks like he's uh, able to, to get out there and practice multiple days in a row, and that's really a very, very good sign. He is a guy that this defense has been waiting for. He makes the difference, uh, has made a difference in a lot of games, and for all the shortcomings this defense has had, Eric Berry is really the solution for all of them. Both playing at the back of the defense, whether they line him up as the deep safety, uh, maybe try to protect that uh, that cutting ability of his, uh, take some of that pressure off, or whether they line him up down in the box in his robber role where he's very, very comfortable and very productive. Uh, that helps with the run game. It helps with the crossing routes. Uh, basically, all of the things that have been, uh, been a pain in the side to the Chiefs defense through this season, uh, most particularly against the Rams. Uh, having Eric Berry back makes me wonder if they had pulled off that game had he been there. But uh, we don't have a timeline for his return. It is going to be uh, a touch and go thing to see where he's at and see how he comes along. I'm not holding out breath that he's going to play against these Raiders. I, I think really the, the game that's circled on the calendar is going to be against the Chargers. I'd like to see him get back for that. I think he can have an impact against what is the toughest game remaining on the regular season schedule, uh, as well as he's got to get some of that rust knocked off. Uh, it all is how he can hold up in practice and continue to push forward. Um, and not to be undone, uh, Mitch Morse returned to practice as well. Uh, not as much hype about Mitch, but I just want to put that out there before I forget because you get wrapped up in the Barry thing. And I'm not the only one that's getting wrapped up in the Barry thing. His teammates are very excited as well. And for a guy who hasn't actually played on the field with him, Pat Mahomes had some very positive things to say. Just the passion that he has, I mean, he, he can just feel it every single day. I mean, he's, he's working his tail off, and I'm glad that, that he'll be back out there with us. I mean, he's going to come in and bring that spirit, uh, that leadership role, and uh, just come out there and, and play his tail off. And, I'm just and those comments from one leader of this team to another are going to be very important about how the whole team views everything going forward. Clearly, th there's plenty for this offense to be excited about, uh, but this defense is getting a key cog back. After having gotten Justin Houston back uh, just recently, uh, and he's going to be playing a key role in this upcoming game as well, but this looks like the team's getting back to its full strength on the defensive side. They have to come together. They have to gel. Uh, new players have to get used to playing with Eric Berry. A lot of players back there and on this defense in general have never played with the man. So inspiration is one thing. Uh, understanding and having a feel for where he's going to be and that kind of thing is another, but Bottom line is, Eric Berry helps this whole defense. Uh, the front seven's been coming on in terms of getting pressure, playing more solidly against the run. Uh, the linebackers are still a little bit of a question mark there. Um, but what's needed to happen has been in the secondary, and Eric Berry knows every position, knows where everybody's supposed to be on any given play. And he's going to be able to help get them lined up, help avoid some of those uh, miscues that we've seen, missed assignments, or, or confusion back there. And that's really what's going to help this team going forward. 
Now, if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscription below, hit the little tick mark on the bell so you get a notification. Uh, leave me a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing and leave your comment below in the conversation. If you're somebody that's here all the time, I can't thank you enough. That new intro is for you guys. I have some new things coming. I have some new skills, hopefully, that I can continue to develop. And this channel is going to get better as we go along. So thanks for putting up with me to this point and making this channel grow. You guys are incredible. With that said, we're going to start talking about these Raiders. And you can't really talk about the Raiders without talking about what's going on in their front office. Uh, I don't know if, if Reggie's even available anymore. He, he might be on permanent leave. I don't know. Uh, John Gruden's running this team. And he's running it kind of into the ground at this point. It's one of those deals where he's going to remake it in his image however he wants it. And he is a guy that is very specific in what he wants. And... We're going to see that come through, and right now the cupboard's a bit bare. So we're going to go through some key points. Uh, there really is, is no way that the Chiefs should even come close to losing this football game. Other than it's an AFC West team, and it's an AFC West game, and you never know what's going to happen in this division. So that said, uh, the Oakland defense is actually worse than KC's. So the, the Chiefs have the advantage there head-to-head, -head. but when you look at it, uh, especially in the passing game, Pat Mahomes has all the world in the world to work with. All the room in the world to work with because they give up the most yards per attempt in the NFL. They're dead last in that category, this Oakland defense. And you're talking about uh, guys that have lost their pass rush. Um, they have one good player in the back and a, a lot of suspect guys back there. We're going to talk about some of them in, in particular. But what it does is set Pat Mahomes up for what he feels he can do the best, uh, survey, use his skill set, uh, and, and extract every little bit that he can from this Oakland defense. In fact, uh, I'm not alone. John Gruden has a good opinion about what Pat Mahomes can do as well. You look at Mahomes, what sets him apart at such a young age from so many other guys? Well, his overall skill set is sickening. I mean, it really is. He's double-jointed. I mean, he can throw the ball from any platform possible. Running to his left, fading backwards, he can get out of trouble. I mean, he's got off the, off the chart arm talent. The skill level is unbelievable. And he's got a playing style um, that reminds me of Favre. I mean, he's, he's a young Favre. That's why I think Andy Reid went and got him. He, he won't quit on any plays. He makes a lot of plays when there's nothing there. Now, John's got a lot of good points there. He is fairly complimentary of, of most players, especially a guy that he, he talked to in the QB camp before he was drafted. Um, but that said, who he's throwing to is important as well. Travis Kelsey had kind of a down game against the Rams, a couple of drops. Uh, we are going to see uh, Ty Hill be featured again, I'm fairly sure, because Sammy Watkins has not practiced to this point as of this recording. And I, I'm iffy whether he's going to play against these Raiders. It's clearly a game I don't think they need him for, so they might just let him rest, take it easy on that foot. Uh, but what that does is it highlights Tyreek Hill, and he's had four touchdowns and over 300 yards receiving it, since Sammy's been able to go. So without Sammy on the field, I think Tyreek's in for another big day. Their best secondary player is Conley. Uh, I don't think he's going to travel with Tyreek enough to make a difference. Uh, and exploiting those safeties is, is really the name of the game. Uh, Carl Joseph, you've heard me say for a long time, is way overrated. His coverage skills are poorly, poorly lacking. And if you're going to try to play cover two with him and, and Nelson or even Gilchrist, there's a lot of guys back there that are going to get burnt by Tyreek Hill in particular, but a number of players in general. So have a look out for that. Pat Mahomes should have a big day. Number two is on the defensive side of the ball, and you know, it's one of the keys to any game in this league right now, especially as the new NFL gets going, and if you missed my video last on the, the new NFL and what it means, go check out that one, it'll be in the cards at the end of the video here. Justin Houston's back, uh, they have D Ford, both have primetime matchups going into this football game. Uh, and you would normally say that Justin Houston probably has the edge, uh, but honestly, the, the play of the right tackle Parker in Oakland has been so atrocious that it's really D. Ford's got the better matchup here. D. Ford's speed in particular. Uh, we're going to take a look here at what uh, the Baltimore pass rusher Udon had to do, uh, and he is a guy that is not th the fastest off the snap. Um, in fact, when the ball's released, he's, he's not very close. Uh, D. Ford's nearly three quarters of a yard on average closer to the ball when it's released. Um, so <laughs> what he can do 
is go through all of these plays that, that Udon got home in a big way last week against the Raiders. I think D Ford has even more of an advantage. His first step and his newfound power, playing a little bit better with leverage, I think, uh, once engaged, especially against a taller tackle, he's able to get underneath and use that power. Uh, and that's something we're going to have to see a lot from D Ford. Uh, he is in a, in a very unique position to have a big game against this particular tackle. Uh, and once he does it, I think you'll see some rotation too. Look for, look for Tano Passigno as well as Breland Speaks to come in in relief of the starters as well. But uh, this could be a field day for the Chiefs up front. Uh, and not just from the edge because uh, Chris Jones has been on a tear lately. In fact, he was, was finally recognized... Uh, as D Ford was, as a defensive player of the month. And he had some good things to say about that as well. I seen D winning last month, and I'm like, um, I got to give me one. I got to give me one. And, you know, <laughs> I know I went and told D that I'm going to get this one this month. And, you know, he laughed at me, and uh, I told him they yelled, it happened, huh? So, <laughs> so, it's more so of a competitive thing, and that's what we have on this defense. A, a bunch of guys that are hardworking, competitive, and uh, that want to compete at every moment of the day. Competition breeds success, and I think that's really important going forward. We're going to hope to see that build as Eric Berry returns and the intensity level comes up a notch. Now, looking at number three, the Chiefs need to run inside on this particular defense. You can see that Baltimore had a field day running almost 6.8 yards per carry last week in 240-plus uh, yards rushing against the Oakland defense. Uh, a, a lot of yardage to be gained there, and for a game that... Again, I don't think they ran enough against the Rams in order to kind of control that clock. This is a game that they can control the clock, they can run it out. I think there's going to be a lot of points scored. Uh, this is going to be a game that Kareem Hunt has a lot to feast on, and it's mostly inside. I think you can get going both ways from what we've seen on film. Uh, the interior rushes over both the right guard uh, and in between that guard tackle spot on the left, I, I think there's plenty of yardage to be made. Look for Kareem Hunt to have a pretty good day if Andy feeds him the ball. And number four on defense, uh, you know, Carr's had a rough go against this defense and Bob Sutton and, and his play calling in particular, but the cupboard's even more bare this season. They brought in Jordy Nelson, who has accumulated a total of 25 receptions. That's pretty ridiculous. Uh, clearly, he, he still runs decent routes, but he doesn't have the explosiveness, I think, to get loose on these particular uh, trio of corners. I expect him to be in the slot quite a bit, so Fuller's probably going to be on him, and, and that's best on best. Uh, the, the other guys, they have some athleticism. The Chiefs need to be careful with that, but I don't think there's anybody that really scares you on th this wide receiver group outside of Nelson. Really, the passing game needs to flow as it has through uh, Jared Cook. We've seen him dismantle the Chiefs' defense before. Uh, Eric Murray may be looking for some payback to that point. Uh, but he is second on this team in receptions. The offense flows through him in the downfield passing game because the, the guy who leads this team is the running back. And if this team has Dorian O'Daniel out there specifically to cover running backs, they should be okay. So the next thing falls down to the safeties. Who can take, take on and cover Cook in a way that, that allows them to be removed from this game plan? And whether that's Sorensen, who I think it can do a, a good job initially, uh, again, not thinking that Barry's going to play, or whether that comes Lucas or Murray down the line. I think Murray's probably looking for payback, but we will see. The guy to focus on in the passing game is going to be Cook, and I think that the Chiefs are going to have the answer for it. Overall, I think this is going to be a good day for the Chiefs, uh, and I hope you guys are ready for it. Again, let me know what you thought of that intro. I'm working on some other things, some more video stylish kind of things. I, and I'm going to try to get better at that, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for all your comments and all your support through this season so far. It's only going to get better. Uh, thank you again, and I will talk to you next time.